Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another movie review. Today we are talking about the follow-up of A Quiet Place, A Quiet Place 2. Yeah, of course, it's a sequel. Anyways, uh, I want to preface this with uh, something that I recently found out about myself, and that is movies like this aggravate me. Um, they annoy me, even though I like this. Um, so the TLDW, Too Long Didn't Watch, I enjoyed this movie, but I'm going to explain to you why it also annoys me. Uh, it's the same thing with the, uh, I think it's one of the reasons why I didn't like Bird Box, and I think it's one of the reasons why I, I liked the first Quiet Place, and I liked The Silence, which actually came first as far as book form. Um... Uh, Tim Levin wrote The Silence before A Quiet Place came out, if that makes sense. And then Netflix made the adaptation. But anyways, um, I think that it aggravates me in, in movies. Maybe not so much in books, but in movies when one of the... Uh, and I'm going to explain myself here, so please just hang around. Um, when movies take away a sense. And the reasoning for that is completely biased and completely all on me but I spend the entire film looking for screw-ups. And that's just my own analytical brain. Um, I, I, I can't enjoy the movie because as much as maybe I should because I'm sitting there going, okay, well, that might not be able to happen. Or even if they explain it later on, it ruins the beginning for me because that's all I can think of. That's all I, I, I get stuck on those certain things. So I think I'm going to do, um, when, I, when I restart Top 5 Friday, I'm going to talk about, you know, the top five uh, tropes that I don't like in movies and books. And I think this is going to be one of them. Um, now, while I did enjoy the movie... Like I said, there was a lot of stuff that maybe either I missed or that I glossed over because I was constantly sitting there going, could that have happened? Why would they do that? Uh, because one of the characters is deaf, uh, hearing impaired, and that's like the major point of the movie. Um, that's a big part of the tension. And I was constantly just hyper-focused on what they were getting right and what they might have gotten wrong and that kind of thing. And I'm not going to sit here and tear the movie apart because of that very, very specific bias on my side. I did enjoy it. There were several scenes um, that I really enjoyed. Everything in the, the smelting chamber. Um, I, I think it was a smelting chamber. Might not have been. But anything in there... I thought was very well done. Um, this is another movie, but this is on purpose. This is another movie that the dialogue is very, very low. But of course, I mean, they're supposed to be whispering. Luckily, the music wasn't overpowering. Uh, there were certain scenes where I still had to have subtitles on. I had to rewind it to make sure I caught what was going on. But this is also one of those movies where it doesn't matter a whole lot because they try to tell the story visually as much as they um, tell the story with dialogue. So I'm, it's not even a complaint. It's just something that, you know, I, I noticed uh, because I did complain about it in my Dune review. So, you know, it wouldn't be right if I just sit here and go, I didn't have a problem with it. I did have issues where I had to rewind it. <clears throat> and maybe just my ears are going bad. I don't know. I spent 15 years playing uh, music in a shed with absolutely no hearing protection. What's, I'm talking about death metal, thrash metal, all that stuff, and that's probably part of the reason why. Uh, the movie is fine. I, I really don't have any major complaints about it other than my, my own nitpicky bullshit. Um, the, I think everyone did a, a good... I was a little bit confused at the beginning because I didn't realize that the beginning was before. Even though it said day one, yes, I caught that, but seeing John whatever his last name is, I don't want to butcher it, um, seeing the actor who dies in the first one, uh, seeing him at the beginning of this one, I was kind of like, what's going on? And then it, it became clear, um, because I, I, I said, once I figured it out, I was like, oh, this is a prequel, and Dan's like, no. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I was like, just watch the movie, and I was trying to watch the movie, but like I said, certain things were, were, were getting to me. Um, at the end, it was very odd to me um, that they would hire such a big name actor for such a small role. Um, I think his name is uh, Jamon. 
I believe. I don't want to annihilate his name either. But seeing how little time he had, I was <laughs> I was kind of like, why why is this why why they get such a big name person for like maybe a total of maybe five minutes screen time? I thought that was I thought that was odd. Um, but uh, I did love Cillian Murphy. Uh, Ki- I don't think it's Killian. I think it's Cillian Cillian Murphy. Um, I think he was my favorite character out of the entire thing. Of course, the mother's badass. She was badass in the first one. Um, and the girl um, that is hearing impaired, I loved watching uh, her her go through it. The the her her emotions re- really really got to me in a good way um, throughout the film, and I I enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, the monsters. Same monsters, nothing really changes, but now they know how to kill them. Uh, they find out at the end of the, the first movie. But overall, I'm giving this four stars. Uh, I, I don't really see anything wrong with the film that <laughs> I guess normal horror fans would pick out. So I would love to hear from you. What did I miss that was maybe bad or that made this amazing? Because I couldn't get over the fact that you know I was like I was like I was going to be able to edit the film or edit the script. Uh, what, what's something that I might have missed that you thought was just amazing? Because I didn't find anything amazing in this one. I would have liked to have seen, and maybe it would have com- completely changed the the tone of the film but i might might have liked to see an evolution with the creatures or maybe a creature that we hadn't seen before who knows i don't know something like that something a little bit different because it started to feel a little bit like it was just a a, a rehash you know we're we're just trying and, and it ends kind of on a cliffhanger it ends very abruptly one more thing I'm impressed. I guess they shot this directly after they finished the first one because they didn't have to do any um, de-aging or aging on the kids. Um, I thought that was cool um, that none of the kids seemed any older because it picks up directly after the first one. And if there's a part three, it can 100% pick up after this one. Although... I don't know how that's going to work. Um, why would they ever leave the place where they end up? That kind of thing. But have you watched *A Quiet Place* too? What did you think about it? Were you able to get? Were you able to turn off your editor brain and enjoy it for what it was? I would love to hear from you down there in the doobly doo. Whether or not you loved it, you hated it, you felt mad about it. But if you felt any of those things, like I said, please give me details and what you really loved, really hated, what didn't work for you in the film down there in the doobly doo, so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another movie review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!